and Eli, I'm just going to send it to you and you figure out where you put that. <laughs> I don't have a YouTube channel. Yes, how did non-Houston people, Eli, uh, Eli is asking, find the event? If anyone wants to chime in. Oh, text or email. It was on a meetup group. Okay. So you're in the Houston meetup group? Yes. Gotcha. Are you in Houston? I'm in, I'm, I'm in Houston, yes. Okay, awesome. Good stuff. Maybe just go ahead and chat your answers. I know Tableau retweeted one of your tweets. Eli, I'm terrible at social media. I almost don't even try anymore. Um, so I really appreciated y'all's <laughs> efforts in, in kind of sharing today's session. Okay, awesome. So my introduction to Tableau was in 2013. I was interning at you know a behemoth e-commerce company that everyone's familiar and reliant on. Um, and that's where I got to know of the platform. Um, I was in business school, so I went back to business school. I tried to take it back with me. Then there were a couple of years I was working at a nonprofit. I tried to bring it back. I, I really, my main work is in the Salesforce ecosystem. That's what I do all the time, working with nonprofits, higher education institutions in Salesforce implementations. I also sit right now as the director of a nonprofit that is very Salesforce built, but they had a need for analytics, mapping, you know, their large reservoirs of data that they've been collecting uh, over the last well, two years and finding a way to put that information out to the public. You know, not just information, not just boring numbers and insights, but information that one could play around with, interact with in um, uh, a very visual way and easy for people to understand. So just taking large amounts of data and presenting it in a way that's uh, kind of more easy to digest. I will point y'all at some point, if I don't forget, to the thing that I built, but that kind of rekindled my passion for Tableau it introduced me to Tableau Public because that's kind of what we had to rely on um, to be able to, you know, kind of put our data out in a way that was publicly accessible without spending an insane amount of money on licensing. Um, and yeah, it just helped me kind of rediscover uh, Tableau. So for today's kind of walk through, I don't know what to call it. Again, I'm really not coming from a position of tremendous experience knowledge. Like, like I have learned a decent amount uh, in these last couple of months or relearned. Um, but I'm hoping to approach a topic that I guess has been in a lot of our minds, um, you know, with everything with George Floyd, the social justice, it's not really about that. It's kind of parallel to it in a way. Uh, so I, for pre preparing for this demo, I just went out searching for like a data set that I could get hands on that I could, you know, use in Tableau that I could use to build some kind of visuals and analytics in Tableau. Um, so I went ahead and found from some nonprofit that works with incarceration and, you know, people in prisons, uh, just kind of find the information, find like an Excel file with data. And I was like, okay, let's use this data. Let's pull it into Tableau public and let's kind of walk through what it looks like, uh, to interact with it. Um, that's what we're going to be working on. And then overlaid it with some other data around, and this is broken down by the 50 continental, well, 49 continental U S states and Hawaii. Um, and then I overlaid that with data around education levels in different states, as well as employment level, just literally one column of data, just to in spirit show what it feels like or looks like to overlay different kinds of data. Um, some of the data that I have created, well, created this element of data about, you know, our organizations work in those states completely fictitious. Uh, the data that I'm pulling in around education and employment might be from different years. So this is not a scientific demo. This is just a kind of walkthrough to get a sense of what the capacity of the platform is, how it could be used, right? So let's not take away any insights from the data I'm using. Um, I think the incarceration data is from 2010, the employment data is more recent. I didn't find anything more recent, but just really how the platform works and how we could potentially use it to tell a story uh, with the data uh, and how this potentially free platform could help us to work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen at this point. This is Tableau Public that I have installed over here. Um, and honestly, anyone, please feel free to in interrupt with a question at any point in time. Um, I get bored of just talking nonstop for a long amount of time. So I actually appreciate the interruptions. Do you figure out where to get Tableau Public? If you just search Tableau Public, I don't know what the URL is. Tableau Public. 
Google usually helps out with the most relevant link. And there's a little button to download the app. Just enter an email address. You can enter a fake email address if you don't want to be spammed. Um, and it'll start the download right away. So that, that'll download the app to your desktop, whether you're on Windows or Mac, both should work. And, and you can go ahead and install it. No licensing, nothing required. The second thing, okay, so once we get into Tableau, this is what we see. And then on the left side, you can see it says connect. Like, hey, where does your data live? Connect to your data and I'm gonna pull it in. The options that we see here in Tableau Public are very limited. So you could have an Excel file that you can pull into it. I haven't played with the rest of them. I don't know how it works. I'm gonna rely on Google Sheets and I'll tell you all in a bit why. And then there's a few other options of like, I guess, connecting to custom applications a little bit over my head. As I mentioned, I work with the Salesforce ecosystem. I leaned towards Tableau because it directly natively integrates with Salesforce if you're using the paid version uh, of Tableau. Salesforce then bought Tableau. This happened much later. No, or did happen sooner. But it's not like they work that well together anyway at this point in time. It'll get better with the time. Uh, but yeah, the number of apps that Tableau integrates with is extensive. Um, so you can easily go ahead and um, you know, go ahead and explore what all connectors they have, and you can just directly connect to your system and start pulling data. I, for my demo, I'm going to use Google Sheets. So when I say, hey, I want to use Google Sheets, it's going to have me authenticate a specific account that I want to use. It's going to ask for permission. It's going to say, okay, you're all set, you're done. And then it gives me a list of all the different spreadsheets that I have sitting in my Google Sheets. Um, I choose the sheet that I created with the sample data set, I hit connect. Now I mentioned I'm using Google Sheets for a particular reason. The cool thing about Tableau, the way it works with Google Sheets, Tableau Public, sorry, and only with Google Sheets, is that it actually, I believe theoretically, and uh, it auto refreshes. Let's say we pull in data, we build a workbook, and then we publish it to Tableau Public because we want to share it with the world. Um, that it maintains that connection with Google Sheets and it's supposed to auto refresh it date. So if your data changed over time and you just go ahead and update it in Google Sheets, your visuals, your workbook, everything will actually auto update in Tableau by itself on that interval. I have a really quick question about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so this is amazing because I didn't know that you could connect Google Sheets, but so theoretically, if you had like a Google form populate the Google Sheet, then it would update that as well, right? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. I haven't experienced it myself because again, I rely on the Salesforce connector and it doesn't work with the auto refresh, even because I blended data between Google Sheets and Salesforce. And because there's Salesforce involved, it doesn't do that auto refresh. And I also asked like the sales reps at Tableau, like, hey, does that work? She went and she got me answers. I haven't validated it, but I have seen discussions online that says, yeah, it runs on some sort of schedule and once a day, it'll go in and pull the new information uh, from Google Sheets. Wow, that's so exciting. Okay, thanks. <laughs> awesome. So it's showing me the four different tabs I have on my spreadsheet. This one is just, and I can kind of take a sneak peek at what that data is. This one is irrelevant. It was just me figuring out the headers on my sheet. This is the one with all of the, the primary data, so to speak, right? That's kind of all in here that I kind of blended three different data sources. I created another sheet of fictitious information of like organization, like information for my organization. And the premise is, hey, I'm operating my nonprofit, working with social justice, or just helping you know people that are incarcerated uh, in many different states. And how how have I staffed those states? And how much I intended to add more columns, but I was like, it's fictitious anyway, so let's just roll with something. But how much am I spending in each of those states? And the idea was, let's correlate what the kind of observation is, is what I'm seeing on the field, or like what the statistics say, and am I rightly investing? Uh, you know, in the different states where the need is, where I'm getting the biggest bang for my buck, so to speak. Um, we may or may not kind of get to that. Okay, so I've got four sheets of data. I have to decide, hey, how do I pull that data into Tableau to start working with it? So my primary data is going to be the incarceration data. That's what I want to kind of do storytelling around. I'm going to pull that sheet. And let's say I want to blend this with another source of data uh, or another, yeah, another source of data. That could be from a different system. It could be your different Google sheet, because I can always say, hey, I wanna add you know, another source of data. I wanna add another Google Sheet. I don't really have anything, so I'm not gonna do that. But I could potentially re-authenticate. It's gonna give me the list of sheets again, and I can pull in another one. I can even pull in a whole different 
source like platform, or I can, of course, have multiple sheets uh, in the same kind of well, Google sheet and kind of join them together. So when I try joining it, it's going to say, okay, how does it, how do the, how does the data in one sheet relate with the other sheet? In my case, it's the state. I've got the 50 US states spelled out exactly the same. And a couple of advanced options I'm not going to kind of talk about, but essentially there's one row for each state. And that's what I'm telling it. And that just improves the performance a bit, which with this, it's very efficient because it's a small amount of data. If you've got larger amounts of data, you want to blend that data correctly so it's performant. Great, so I set up my data source and now I'm ready to start trying to figure out, hey, how do I visualize this data? So on the left, I see all the headers uh, in my spreadsheet and might be helpful to kind of keep them open side by side. Y'all can see the Google sheet at this point, right? Yep. Okay, awesome. So I've got all the headers for that specific tab that I had across the top, all the data is kind of down here. And on the left side, I have, of course, the 50 states, you know, data from the 50 states. Oh, it seems like there's an extra. I don't know what's happening there. Oh, it's got District of Columbia, gotcha. Okay, so I've got all my data here. And over here, I see on the left side, I've gotten essentially all the data. So just to give you a rundown of what the data is, I've got numbers of how many people are incarcerated broken down by ethnicity across all genders. I've got the total population, um, you know, again, broken down by ethnicity. I've also got the numbers of female incarcerated as well as the population and the male incarcerated as well as their population. Additionally, as you noticed, I blended two different sheets. So I had this metric of how many staff members I have in each state. So that also kind of shows up over here. And then I also had, I computed like what's a compensate, what's a, what am I spending on staffing these offices, right? So that also kind of shows up over here. And that's coming from a different sheet altogether. That's why it's in a different tab. Um, but yeah, in the, sorry, in the first sheet, I also had information around um, education and employment, just to say, hey, can we see a correlation between how you know, good education is and how, uh, you know, or how high education is in the state and does that correlate with uh, what the incarceration looks like? So let's jump into our first kind of visualization, so to speak. The first thing I might want to do is I just want to see all the, I need to minimize all of our faces. I'm going to trust that y'all are there. Uh, I'm just going to drop in a list of all the states, right? So I throw that in my rows. I can even throw it in my columns and it kind of creates it in this way. But let's say I throw it in my rows and over here I have um, just a list of all the states that are coming in from the spreadsheet. So let's say I want to grab all the incarceration numbers. I'm gonna leave out all ethnicities because that theoretically ought to be the sum of it, which it's not, don't ask me why, but I'm gonna just drag in the incarceration breakdown for all genders by their, um, by their ethnicity. So I can, it's as easy as just kind of drag and drop and you see the numbers just kind of show up right there, right? So easy, simple, straightforward. But this is just numbers. I mean, this is literally the same thing as seeing it in the spreadsheet. So what's the point of that? Well, if you look at this little menu on the upper right, it says, it says show me, and it lets you choose different ways in which uh, you want to visualize that same data. And it's a little bit intelligent. So it'll give you choices that are relevant to how your data is currently laid out um, you know, in your spreadsheet. So over here, I have a choice of like bar gra graphs, right? I click on bar graphs and boom, it changes that look to now have kind of bar graphs. Maybe this doesn't kind of make sense to me, or maybe I want to try a different one. I want to try these little bubbles, right? First, you know, Tableau is always going to give like an attempt at something and might not make sense. Like, hey, this is not exactly how I want it laid out. So you can kind of play around with it. Like, no, I actually want it broken down by state and I want to see the number stacked. So now I essentially have all the states as columns, you know, along the uh, bottom. And then I have all these rows one for each of the ethnicities, oh, sorry, of the incarceration rate by each ethnicity. So again, just two clicks and it adapts automatically. Say I wanna say, I don't want like individual rows. I just want a single chart with like these little bubbles, one bubble for each ethnicity. Um, I can search for these things, you know, that uh, over here they're called measure values. So, in my search, if I type in measure values, there's actually an option for just measure values. And I can drag and drop this 
right here in the columns. And then I can actually remove all of them because they're at this point redundant. Oops. Okay, now I have a single chart. Um, each state again along the columns as we saw before. And then there's these individual bubbles. And if you hover on each of these bubbles, you will see um, what that metric is uh, and you know what state it corresponds to, et cetera, et cetera. Now Tableau did kind of overestimate what all measures I wanted and it threw in a lot of stuff that I didn't want. So I don't want all ethnicities. I don't want staff members right now. I just want incarceration broken down by ethnicity. So I'm just gonna choose everything else and remove it. And now this just leaves me with information around incarcerated, incarceration broken down by the ethnicity, um, again, broken down by state. So I can say, ooh, what am I seeing you know, really high numbers of? In Texas, if I'm looking at um, white alone, so this is again, just the breakdown for people that are just white, incarcerated, that number is really high. What's the number over here? Oh, in California, again, white alone is really high, right? So that kind of makes sense. That's probably the largest share of the population. And therefore it also reflects, um, you know, how that kind of breaks down. Say. Now this information might not be super helpful. Like, of course, if the population of certain ethnicity is high, that's gonna be, you know, overrepresented uh, when I'm looking at that. Also, if the population of the state itself is high, it's even more overrepresented, so to speak. Um, so what is a way of, you know, kind of modulating that data or like kind of bringing it down to the same standard, so to speak? I could say, hey, instead of just showing me total incarcerated, give me incarcerated for every 100,000 or, you know, or maybe you would just start with something simple. Hey, just show me incarcerated percentage of the population. So what I can, with a feature I can use in Tableau that does that is called formulas. Um, so let's say I want to calculate a formula that takes the total incarcerated that are white alone divided by the population, the total population that's white alone. I will say, hey, I want to create a calculated field. So this is like percentage incarcerated, white alone, all genders. I'll call it what you need to. And I will say, I want all genders incarcerated, white alone divided by all genders, population, white alone. And the interface is really snazzy. It just works really well. It auto populates, et cetera, for you. And to make it a percentage, let's say I'm gonna make that a percentage. So I'm just gonna create a different tab. I'm gonna throw this over here. Instead of a sum at this point, I probably want the average and I'm gonna take the state and throw that in the columns as I had before, right? And I don't wanna see it as a decimal, I actually wanna see it as a percentage. So I'm gonna say, I wanna format this differently. And it's a couple of clicks figuring out where exactly that lives. But once you know where you're going, I wanna show this as a percentage and it shows me percentage incarceration for white people alone in these different states. At this point, You'll see with the way it's currently laid out, I seem to have more kinds of visualizations available to me. And you know, you can actually kind of explore what these visualizations are and figure out, hey, what will look nicer uh, in whatever visual I'm trying to build. So I could do um, kind of a discharge, it's called a highlights table. The higher the number, the darker it is. I could do these kind of bubbles that actually size the bubbles based on you know the size of um, <laughs> yeah, the size of the metric itself. And then there are also some heat maps, etc. that, yeah, as easy as that. It recognizes the name of the state and then it'll kind of plot it on the in the middle of the state. Um, and um, go ahead. Okay. So I'm just gonna Did anyone have a question? Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna go back here and sh show off a couple of the other like user experience kind of benefits of that. Let's say this is TMI, like I don't even know there are so many dotted points, like this is useless to me. I don't know how to start processing this. It'd be nice if I could just like look at one ethnicity at a time. So we do know that each of these things 
our individual measures that we have plotted, right? And each of them have a measure name. So if I search for something called measure names, it's right here. What I can do is I can create a page for each of these measures. Um, so I'm looking at them one at a time. So I take measure names, I drag it into pages. And what it does is it'll create on the right side, this little selector where I can see the measure name itself. And I can actually flip through it and see how the data adapts based on what measure it is. So, oh, okay. Well, black or African American only, I'm seeing more of a spread. Now this is interesting. Uh, which state has higher, you know, populations of incarceration uh, of a specific ethnicity. Again, I think we kind of discussed that this seems a little misleading because population was likely to skew it. Um, so let's actually go back here and do state along the top. We have this at the bottom, and then I want to do a bubble chart. Let's do state right there. Okay. So this might be a little bit, now this is actually kind of modulated to, you know, it's number incarcerated upon population. Um, and therefore it gives us slightly better um, spread than the other one. And it's kind of a little bit more relatable than the other metric that would be less um, reliable just because um, the size of the state would skew that. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to, What's another thing? Okay, let's say 50 states or 51 states, 50 states in DC is you know too much information. I actually want to look at maybe groupings of states or like really look at that data based on region. I can use a feature called grouping. So I can say, hey, I want to take the states and I want to create a group of states. And sorry, this might take a little while, y'all, and y'all can help me out, but what are some groupings we can create? with states, we can say, hey, I'm gonna call it region. I'm gonna do Alabama, Arkansas, um, Florida, Georgia, two, two, two. probably gonna miss something, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi. I should have done this before, Oklahoma, but I did wanna do it in front of you also. Oklahoma, what else am I? Let's throw Texas in there. I'm gonna call this the South. Then I'm gonna do California, Arizona. Let's throw Colorado. Uh, let's include, I want in Utah, I want in Nevada, I want in New Mexico. Let's call this the Southwest. And we can do Delaware, DC, Connecticut, um, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Vermont. I'm going to call this Northeast. And let's create maybe like a Midwest. Midwest would be Idaho. And I'm sure these will vary depending on who's creating it, but in different organizations. But we're just demoing here. Kansas, Maine can go to New England. We can do Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, Ohio, South Dakota. Mm. Let's throw West Virginia in there, Wisconsin, Wyoming into the Midwest. Then we have Maine can go into Northeast, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee can go into the South. Virginia is tricky. Let's throw that in the uh, South and then Washington, Oregon, I actually meant to do West Coast. So, oops, no. We're gonna create a West group, oops. And let's actually pull California out of the West and throw that in the West Coast. Awesome. So I've created groupings of states. And as soon as I do that, I call it region, region appears. Now I, instead of breaking it down by, I could break it down by states 
and this way I actually see, okay, this is the Midwest, you know, and all these are the Midwest states, how do they compare against each other? How do the Northeast states compare against each other? Ooh, New York is high, believably so. How do the Southern states compare against each other? Or I can just drop state altogether. And now I'm just looking at that data by the region, right? So this is regionally, it's summing up all those individual metrics. Um, and this, I think I'm looking at just one specific measure or so. Okay, so it's summing up all those metrics, but within those regions, and it's kind of giving me that visual. So if your organization works in different regions and you want to look at different regional data differently, you can create your own groupings with the, you know, very finite data and use Tableau as quick. And y'all can see how quickly I'm doing this, right? With Excel, there's probably some amount of formulas, some amount of, you know, pivot tables, et cetera, that goes into doing that. Everything is happening super quickly and super fast over here. Now, let's say this is, I do want all the ethnicities, but maybe they're a little bit, um, it's hard to distinguish them. I can do things like, hey, for the different measure of values, I just want different colors. And instead of, whoops, no, not the measure of values. So the different measure names, I want different colors. So now it's going to give me different colors for the different metrics. And then we say, okay, you know what that, the naming is just not working out for me. I just want simpler and easier to understand names. I can say, I want to rename these metrics and I can do that right here itself. I wanna say, drop all genders. I wanna drop, I know there's a faster way to doing this if I can find it. Um, editing aliases names, filter, edit aliases, there we go, wonderful. I can decide to give different names to different metrics and the alias will show. So I can just say, hey, I don't want all genders shown to make it easier to process. Or let's say we don't even need the word incarcerated because that's essentially what the entire data set is. Quickly drop these. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I'm going like really fast through this because there's like so many things I want to show in a matter of one hour. Uh, but please slow me down, stop me with any questions that you have. So I went ahead and I renamed those metrics. Now I can see the measure names on the left side, and I can see, uh, you know, the numbers correspond differently to the different metrics. Right, and this is giving me kind of a breakdown um, by the region. It's adding up the numbers, Tableau is doing the calculation, it's visualizing and it's giving it to me in intuitive fashion. Now let's say I actually want to see one region at a time. So again, we can use that the pages functionality and maybe at this point we don't want this kind of a chart, we just want, oops, too much. I have regions as my pages. Maybe I don't need regions as the columns anymore because I have that in the page and that's a single metric. Okay, it's not going where I wanted it to. But, okay. I'm gonna throw the regions back there. Let's try a different viz. Now let's say this is again too much data and I wanna give people the ability to control, hey, I just wanna look at this specific region at a time and whatnot. So we had pages as an option. We can also create what's called filters. Um, so I can say, I wanna use region as a filter here. I'm gonna include all the options to start with because I don't wanna filter anything out. Oops, values, no, names. Oh, it's already there. I just need to, like drop down here and say, hey, I want to show this filter. And now, where, my bad. Come about region, filter, include all of them, and then show that as a filter. Okay, now I can actually give users the ability to choose one filter at a time, two filters at a time, 
you know, through a nice drop down list and they can say, I just want to see Alaska or I just want to see, you know, all the southern states or the southwest states. And at that point, maybe it makes sense to actually give the breakdown of the states there as well and give people the control of, you know, choosing a specific region and then the data renders accordingly. Actually, do not want this region, this filter. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, questions. I know I just kind of breezed through. I apologize, but trying to give you all as much of the capability. And again, as you can see, I'm doing this all in front of you. You know, none of those pre-prepared. That's really how quickly and how fast you can get visuals from the numbers and hopefully draw insights when you're working with meaningful data. How do you take these sheets and put them into things like PowerPoint, etc.? Okay, perfect question. So let's say we've gotten, you know, visuals that we, you know, are exactly what we need and we want to capture that. So a couple of ways. One, of course, you can go to a worksheet and export. And there are a couple of options over there. Why wasn't it giving me a menu? Hmm. That's funny. Usually it expands and says it gives me the ability to me one quick second. I'm going to stop sharing and start sharing. I want to make sure there isn't anything funky happening here. I'm wondering if it's a limitation, but normally I know with the paid version, I have the ability of saying I want to export or I want to copy and it gives me different choices of, you know, do I want to copy just the data? Do I want to copy this specific whiz itself? And that allows me to then copy it into a PowerPoint. If all of that fails, you can always use the tried and tested, you know, whatever works on your keyboard. So if you're using a Mac, you know, command shift four, and you can kind of snip, you know, whatever you want to grab and put into your PowerPoint or, you know, with Windows, uh, you have the snipping tool. So you can always just generate it and then grab a screenshot right there. So a cooler thing I would say, if you want to share this data is um, if, where is that? Is that also not a bell pull? Huh, that might require, okay, yes, perfect. You can create an account with Tableau Public, again, free of cost. You create an account, you create your own profile, you essentially become a Tableau Public professional. And you can, if your data is not too sensitive, you know, or the insights are not too sensitive and you wanna share them with the world, you can actually publish it online. Right, so I, I say, I wanna to publish to Tableau Public. It's gonna ask you to sign in. You can create your own free account. I'm going to log into my existing account. Hopefully remember my password. It's asking for that. Uh, incarceration, insights. And it tells me, hey, I want to embed my Google Sheets credential so that if I change data in there, I want it to change in Tableau Public. It's going to have me log in one more time to give it access to my Google credentials and confirm that I have, you know, given access to it. And then it should, at this point, start saving that, sending that data to the server. And should take a couple of seconds since the data set is small. And then we'll take a look at what that looks like once it's published. And ultimately, the goal is I publish it on the server. People can search and find visuals. And we'll maybe take a quick look. I know we're coming up on time, but you can search Tableau Public for you know materials and things that other people have put out there. So really, it's a community of visualizations from you know different uh, professionals working in the Tableau ecosystem. It might be people who are doing it from a work perspective. It might just be people who are doing it out of passion. Um, just coming up with different visits, putting it out there um, and, you know, go out there, find something to inspire you and then use that inspiration to create your own visuals. So that's one thing. It's building this community of people who are just out there, you know, sharing their expertise, their passion, their work, uh, and so on and so forth. Additionally, whatever I publish on Tableau Public, I have the ability to get a, an embed link. I can get an embed link and I can embed it in my own website. Uh, or in any other web hosted platform that, you know, people, so imagine you build a visual that speaks to the impact of your organization, 
you put that on Tableau Public, you get an embed link, you put it on your website, and then people come to your website and they can see based on your actual organization data, um, you know, what your impact might look like. So this is, it's successfully saved to Tableau Public. It's gonna navigate me to um, the specific sheet that I just published, and it'll also include all the other sheets. It's gonna take a second and it's going to render that. And while it renders that, I can show you all that I can say, hey, I want to, okay, this has the download option. There ought to be a share option as well. Do, do, do. What happens if I click download? Oh, it'll let, let me download the workbook itself. You can limit what people can and cannot do with your visualizations. And there's the option of keeping it updated every day. Okay, I think the share icon shows up over here. So it's probably just gonna take a second. Um, you know, if, I don't think all of these are necessarily visible yet, but I've created a bunch of different visualizations for kind of one of the organizations I work with, um, really very Houston-centered. So on my visualization, they are technically private on my profile because we share it selectively through other websites. Um, but this is again, data from a Google Sheets document that's laid out on a map of the city of Houston, broken out by the neighborhoods, mapping out essentially all the different schools you know, that exist in the city of Houston. Uh, as you can see over here, I have the ability to saying, hey, I wanna share it, it'll give you either a link or an embed code, give that to your web developer and your web developer can actually share just the specific, um, uh, the specific visual into your website itself. So that's individual sheets. Any other questions at this point before I dive deeper? I had one really fast question. So yeah. you can share it through Tableau Public, but then on the export um, drop down menu that wasn't working earlier, is there usually a code section there as well? Um, on the export, sorry, let me confirm. It, yeah, if you export it from um, from the Tableau app. Uh huh. So then, oh. so then you can embed it without sharing. Is that usually an option on that? It, to get the code? It, you know, I, again, cause I work so much with the paid version. I don't know if this is a, I don't know why they have it in the menu if it didn't work. I don't mm -hmm. know what's happening over here, but yes, usually it gives you, maybe I can open the paid version and just show y'all what that looks like over there. But it gives you the ability of exporting multiple different, you know, aspects of it, so to speak. Um, okay. And just quickly open a workbook. I wonder if there's like a bug in a specific like version of tab, although I installed it just today, so I think it would be working. Let's open a worksheet and see what that looks like. There is some other cool stuff if I can squeeze in that I'd want to. Oops. Okay, so usually if I go to worksheet and export, it gives me the ability to export the image, the data, or cross tab would export, I believe just the data itself. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Exporting the, hmm, I'm not sure what that means, but I would think exporting the image would be relatively easy. It gives you a bunch of different options of where you want the um, legend to be, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So let's say I want the legend below and I want it saved that way. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Give me a quick second here. Gonna pull yeah, because then if that one's the PNG, then usually if you want to have like the interactive embedded thing right. on your site, you'd want to do the Tableau public. Right, yeah. Okay, that makes so sense. This is the, oh, I don't know if it was, if that's the highest resolution, but this is the PNG. That's awesome. exporting. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks. It's something it's worth looking into. I don't know why they wouldn't let you. Maybe it's because I've not saved it. I wonder if that's the reasoning. No, I did save it on Tableau Public. Okay, I don't know. I think that's something worth looking into. But you know, you can always just. I think it's easier to just kind of screen capture it because then exporting it because you can choose whatever part of it you want to 
capture anyway uh, than the export function. So that's always there with you whether or not the feature is there. Okay, I'm going to just cancel this for now so we can keep looking at a few other features. So we looked at creating groupings from data. We looked at creating probably not maybe reliable formula. Um, let's talk about like overlaying data. So let's say I want to see, um, you know, incarceration, but maybe a particular ethnicity, maybe the overall population, et cetera. And I want to overlay it with say something like, how many employees do I have? Um, or employment rate, right? I want to see um, the employment rate and incarceration together. So I can see if there's any correlation between high unemployment and high incarceration, um, something of that sort. So I could set that up again. I'm gonna do measure values in the columns instead of having it separate out. And then over here, I can do incarceration, no, unemployment rate, and probably drop everything else for now. And then total incarceration, all genders incarcerated, incarcerated all ethnicities. Okay. And maybe this is a little confusing because both of them are bubbles. I can say, hey, I want one of them to be a different shape, for instance. So let's say unemployment, I can say, I wanna make that a different shape altogether. Nope, that's wrong. Measure names, I want different shapes or different measure names. And I can say, I want my um, unemployment rate to be a circle and my incarcerated to be a circle, a uh, square. And then I can also do, hey, let's do education. Uh, what was the exact name of the metric? Percent higher, okay, there you go. I can drop these in here. And those are different. Now, you're probably not seeing them because uh, the unemployment, no, the scale was very different. So I might need to like scale it down so that they're, you know, in the similar range. So again, instead of percent, I'm going to make that percent total incarcerated across all genders. I'm going to say, hey, I want all genders incarcerated. No all ethnicities, incarcerated all ethnicities, divided by all ethnicities population. Okay, so then that'll make it into more of a percentage and they can be all within the same range and I can drop the sum of incarcerated and then it becomes a little bit more, you know, on the same level. I probably need to convert some of these into percentages over here, it's not really mattering if it's a sum or average because there's just one metric, but otherwise you have to be careful for like formulaically what you're using. Um, but let's see, this is, okay, this is a percentage and then that is a percentage. Let's instead of state, let's do region. I wonder if there's kind of a difference there. Okay, percent incarcerated. What was this metric? Okay, this was percent incarcerated. I do need to multiply it by 100 to get to the same scale. Did that help? Okay. And then I probably need to format that. Actually, this seems more right, right? Because percent incarcerated, 41%. I think I know what's happening. Probably need to do an extra 100 just because the scale is off. Okay, that's more like it. So you, you all probably want to encounter these issues with your kind of more better quality data. Uh, I'm just grabbing at stuff from different places, but that's what it's kind of telling me. So I can now correlate, you know, does higher in, you know, higher unemployment correlate with higher incarceration? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, right? Start with a hypothesis, see if the data tells the story. Let's maybe break it down by regions and say, oh, am I seeing different patterns in different regions and so on and so forth. So building kind of those different 
insights, trying to find something that clicks, uh, or no, not really trying to find something that clicks, but seeing to find if there's something that clicks, building kind of a you know visual kind of a picture around that and then sharing that insight. Um, maybe I'm stretching too much trying to get the, any kind of correlation. Maybe it doesn't exist and playing with these numbers tells me that. Maybe I work with something else in terms of what my, I call it compensation span, but maybe I wanna see how does what I'm spending in the different regions for like my organization or my you know, nonprofit, um, does it correspond to how significant the problem is in different places? So for instance, I can probably just keep incarcerated and how much I'm spending in the different regions um, and try and get a correlation between, am I operating in the places where the problem is kind of more you know, significant and dire. So I'll probably need to create a calculated field for this as well to get, um, I guess a more even some compensation spend. Yeah, probably a bad idea for me to try and do this on the spot. Um, but yeah, I would probably figure out what my total compensation spend is, see, okay, what percentage of my total budget am I spending in which region? And then try and overlay that and say, oh, am I spending more in the you know Northeast when in fact the problem is deeper in the South or something of that sort. Um, Tableau can help you visualize that for your own internal decision-making. And then of course, when it comes to data you want to share outside, you obviously wouldn't share your own internal decision-making data, uh, but just you know, any insights in terms of what's the impact we're having, how many people have we served in different regions and how does that correspond with you know, where the problem is significant and so on and so forth. Um, and of course, there's always you know, the ability to map out data in you know, different regions, different states and whatnot. It's so fabulous when it comes to translating everything into um, you know, actual kind of geographies. So find a metric, choose the map selection, throw the metric on, and it's going to say, come up with different colors to show how significant the problem is. You can even change those colors to say, well, I actually want more of a red green you know, kind of spectrum. I can do red green, I'm probably gonna reverse that. Red means the problem is higher and it tells you where the problem is lower versus where the problem is higher. In terms of presentation, individual worksheets are great. Maybe I want to throw five, four or five different things uh, in the same layout uh, to kind of you know create more of a dashboard-like feel, which is completely possible with Tableau. So I can say, hey, I want to build a dashboard. Um, I can actually create these little floating tiles and resize to your specifications. It's a little bit tricky here. I want this floating and I want to control the size and location of that. So I say, I want to keep this one over here. I don't need the legend. I want the map right below that. So I'm going to create that as a floating element. I'm going to decide my size. I'm going to pop that down below the chart. So you can see the chart above, you can see the map below, and then you can publish this dashboard onto Tableau Public, grab the embed link, and then publish that back to your own website, right? And you have an interactive kind of look and feel. So we are coming up on time. Uh, I'm gonna show you all some of the things that I built recently. Um, and this is a nonprofit that works out. This was kind of in partnership with a couple of different organizations. And the idea was to uh, capture the needs of you know the students that are uh, studying in Houston, in the Houston uh, Independent School District system, uh, based on survey data, based on information we received from teachers and, you know, uh, and teachers and other community members in terms of what are the needs of the students? How does it distribute across the city? How does it vary by gender, ethnicity, um, you know, all those different metrics? And how do we create an interactive way to kind of visualize? I think there must be some issue with Tableau Public right now because it never takes this long to load anything. But everything that you're seeing over here, these are all Tableau dashboards that we published to Tableau Public and then embedded here on a Salesforce-based website. So these are numbers that are coming in from Google Sheets in all probability that we pull into Tableau, you know, render a certain way and then put on a dashboard in an intuitive way and then throw it on a website for people to explore. Now oh, there's a little map right there. Um, you can see there's a bunch of different markers. I can say, hey, I wanna see 
you know, how the different regions vary by percentage of students that uh, exhibit an economic disadvantaged household. Uh, and I want to vary a specific, the marker size by, well, how many of these people actually asked for assistance that, you know, they consider basic needs, clothing, shelter, food, and so on and so forth. Um, here I see the problem is more severe and then which schools are exhibiting a larger share of the problem. Uh, I can vary it by certain political boundaries. I can say, hey, I wanna see it from an elementary kind of zoning district level, right? So I can change the boundaries based on that. And then it renders and goes and does the crunching and kicks it back. And this is all running on the Tableau platform. This is geo mapping. You know, it's very popular feature functionality. We can also look at just numbers. You know, I just want to see numbers. I want to see metrics. I want to see poverty rates. I want to see average income household and so on and so forth. Maybe I want to see district wide. Maybe I just want to see a specific region of the city and all the schools that fall into the specific region. So in the Houston ISD system, we have something called feeder patterns. That's what that um, kind of corresponds to. Maybe I want to vary it by, well, let's see what else uh, we have in the filters down there, but you choose a filter, it crunches all your data and then brings back a metric for that specific subset uh, you know, of data that you filter down to. And you can see a bunch of different charts, visuals, bar charts, um, pie charts. Okay, there are definitely some issue with Tableau right now with the servers, but different kinds of visuals, different ways that people might wanna process that information. You can hover over it and see the the raw numbers, uh, you can put the total separately. So you have the full picture and then you have the breakdown on the left side. Um, I could spend two hours just talking about this. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but just to give you a sense of what's possible with the data that lives in your Google Sheets, that lives in your CRM, pulling it into Tableau, blending it together, visualizing it, and then you know sharing it with the world. Okay. What other questions? I know this is, probably too much in too little time, but think of this as a demo and think of, you know, how quick and easy it is if you have the right data and structure the right way to create visuals out of that. Other questions, ideas, things to explore together. What are we thinking? I'm presuming that the data is stored in the cloud, right? So Google Sheets I'm using is again, a cloud-based solution. You can use your own Excel file to pull into Tableau, in which case, if you don't publish it to Tableau Public, you can keep that data local to yourself. It doesn't have yeah, to be. Yeah, that's, that's sort of why I was asking, because we have horrendous rules and regulations, especially around mm -hmm. children and vulnerable people about raw data and. Mm -hmm. privacy right i'm actually curious if you can use tableau public to without storing mm. data in the cloud you'd probably want tableau desktop for that so you might have to cough up you know a little bit of money and then yeah, you I'm, maybe keep it off the cloud right yeah I, i'm kind of thinking we'd probably have to keep it off the cloud mm -hmm. because right. there's just too much of a risk of it being right. hacked or Absolutely. do you know what i mean uh -huh. and there's always you know you might want to take kind of a subset of your data and remove anything that's personally identifiable. I know the rules are, mm. for good reason, very stringent in, uh, uh, in that side of the world than it is over here. But you could take a subset of data that does that cannot be tied to any individual and just store that in you know Google Sheets or whatever to the point that even if it was leaked, there is nothing at risk. You know, there's nothing. It's too. Yeah, I, to the point that I, I think I think we'd have to we'd have to do that basically. Yeah. I don't know if want of a better description, wash the data. Yeah. And, you know, Tableau does have discounts for nonprofits. Um, I don't work for them. I have no idea what they are, <laughs> but there's always worth exploring, you know, what that cost might be. And you might just need that one license if you're a single individual, um, you know, building all the visualizations, B to C. Okay, awesome. What else? I'm sorry, y'all, this is like the first time I'm kind of actually demoing Tableau Public, so it can only get better if I keep doing this, uh, if I feel the need to keep doing this. Um, but there is so much you can do with it. There's so many better demos online. I think what I my goal was to show is just how easy it is 
how great the returns can be. It's definitely going to be a learning curve. Um, the collective wisdom of the world is at your fingertips. Thank you, YouTube. Um, but it can be so rewarding and so much easier to work with than, you know, in Excel spreadsheets. And, you know, if you're publishing it somewhere, if you do go the whole hog, you get Tableau, which will probably come with Tableau online, which means you're publishing it to an on the cloud, but like an authenticated account that just belongs to your organization. You can be looking at each other's work, you know, sharing it with each other, sharing it with the organization, um, and really kind of collaborating and building this repository of insights. It, 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 allowing for the data protection legal stuff. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, with Brexit, that's a little bit up in the air for us in the UK anyway right, at the moment. Right. Yeah. Um, it offers fantastic opportunities for interagency working. Absolutely. Yes. And um, yeah, I'm quite excited about the potential for that interagency working there. Yes. Um, and I don't know if Brexit's going to help at all because I think where the EU is today is probably where everyone ought to be caring about people's data and protection of that people's data. And I think people <clears throat> speculate that the US might go the EU route. So I don't see why the UK would want to go, uh, you know, a different way. Uh, but really, Steph, if like, you just want to see, hey, what are other organizations doing with data around autism? Go to Tableau Public, just search for autism and just see what, what people out there have done in terms of visualizing data. Clearly, it goes back a long way. So there's 150 you know, bits of work just tied to that one keyword. You know, and you can click into it and say, hmm, what else have people built out, out, you know, out there? And can I use my data to build something similar? And at least that gives you maybe that inspiration. It might give you like a guiding star to say, okay, at least I want to leverage or like draw those insights with my data using Tableau or anything else. You know, there's other competing tools. Um, but there's just building this community of, you know, everyone pouring in their work together, I think is just so powerful. Yeah, I, I've got to be honest, I'm very excited about the potential for interagency working. Mm -hmm. That's one. Because um, there's so many organizations that kind of, I know it sounds awful. Yeah. No, we work in there's lots of There's lots of crossovers between the health service, the education service, the yeah. employment yeah. services. Do you know what I mean? They could do it. Yeah. It keeps us in business, you know, <laughs> in the US, like just doing redundant work independent of each other, not talking to each other within an organization, across organizations. Uh, there's just so much of that. And it's unfortunate we don't rely on each other's expertise unless someone's having a discussion at the, you know, water cooler and say, oh, you're doing that, we're doing that too. Um, but yes, to whatever extent we can share each other's expertise, wisdom, uh, you know, with each other and put that in. I I think as well, um, there's an economic argument for using it on both sides of right. the Atlantic. Yeah. Our economies have taken a massive hit due to COVID. Absolutely. And so the opportunity to not duplicate work, right. but instead to collaborate and build upon, you know, basically to be more efficient, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I think whether or not we want to, right. in the short term, that's going to be forced upon all of us, whether or not we're in the UK, right. the Eurozone area, or the US, because right. non-profits and charities are not going to be getting the same level of donations as they were getting pre-COVID, because mm -hmm. a lot of the businesses that used to donate right. Don't are in trouble problem. themselves, aren't they? Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I don't have so much of a question, Drew, but I just want to say thank you for the, the presentation. I thought it was really helpful. Okay. Um, I and I'm also excited. I feel like blitz and I'm like, these numbers are just not working out. And I, that's why Eli asks me, do you want to record this? I'm like, no, not because there's anything, uh, you know, like anything secretive about anything I'm doing. But if tomorrow someone's, if you put this on YouTube and someone's looking at this and they're like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I don't want that to be out there. But I think the idea was to show you how easy it is, you know, how accessible it is how free it is, whatever is free. I think that was kind of mm -hmm. the goal. So hopefully if y'all can take that away, not look at the numbers, because I honestly barely practiced anything before this call, spent maybe 20 minutes this morning to make sure that the connections work. Um, so from a qualitative standpoint, anything I did was completely wrong and don't rely on it, but from just knowing the potential and you know, the tools available to you, 
this is a hint of what's accessible, what's available, and uh, you know what could be available to all of us as we reach out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great overview. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited to dive into it now. I'm going to make my account. <laughs> oh, hi, Drew. Uh huh. Good question. I came in a little bit late, but um, where are the um, what what are all the like the available? Is there a way you can see like specific available public data? Yeah, that you can use. Um, oh, oh. Honestly, I wish I could say Rosalind. Is that you? Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, in terms of data repositories. So what's, do you work in a nonprofit? Is there a specific space that you work in? Uh, sustainability. Okay. So yeah, in terms of where to find data, I mean, Google is my best friend. You know, I was keen about incarceration. So I went to Google and I, I guess the way I kind of do go about it is if I want to find like an Excel document and whatnot that has some statistics, I might type in a keyword. Mm -hmm, right. Sustainability. Oops, there we go. And I might say, hey, I want to Excel file, you know, and hope that it throws something useful, which it might not always do. So uh, it might just come down to knowing, because a lot of, I think, especially since, since I work with so many organizations and like education and whatnot, a lot of the data repositories are managed by the federal government, state governments, right? On like report generation tools, et cetera, that Sometimes, you know, I have in my work found like an Excel document and wondered where it came from. Someone generated a report from, you know, the education department at their state and then right. kind of use that breadcrumbs to get back to the original source and run the actual numbers from there. Um, I think that's kind of one way or, you know, maybe go to Tableau Public and look for sustainability and see what everyone's done. So interesting things to know. You search for a keyword, you see what other people have done that's useful. If you find something really helpful, sometimes people might share their data with you, right? So you might actually be able to download the specific workbook that that, that their kind of Tableau visualization is built on. It might even let you download just the data, you know, if it's an Excel sheet, et cetera. I don't know how you use, that might be good for practice, but if you're actually building something for work, you want to know where your data is coming from. So I don't know if right. I'm telling you anything that's going to be helpful. I don't think I can know, given how much time you've probably worked in the space, um, what your reliable data sources are. You might know them better, but anyway, you can generate data that can be spit out in an Excel file and a CSV file. Um, mm. That's a good that's a, to start. That's a good, that's a good tip. Um, you know, sustainability data is just, is, you know, it's, it's probably not, Databases are just being built, should I say. Yeah, you know, you think that everything out there has been done and surely someone's done this somewhere. When you start getting down to it, no, a lot of things haven't been done. Um, right. A lot of people haven't built out excellent sources or repositories of research or insights on sustainability. Uh, so very possibly you might be the first one building something for others to, you know, look to. Rosalind, also I work in sustainability as well. If you haven't already, I think Drawdown is publishing some more um, some more data in the next year. Oh, drawdown? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Okay. Just Thank you. Shooting blanks here. Oh, there you yeah, go. Project Drawdown. They're international and they have a bunch of stuff. Wonderful. Okay, cool. Hey Aaron, um, if you if you if you can, can you message me through? Um, I think we can message through here. We can, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll drop my email. Yeah, thank you, because I would love to, to know a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Wonderful. Network. I think that's part of these meetings. <laughs> Usually it's not <laughs> exactly. level, but yeah. Awesome. Well, but I appreciate the overview, Drew. It was actually very, uh, like, I think, insightful. So, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll see you at uh, you know at an in person meeting once things yeah, are like, When does that happen? Or does that happen? You know, honestly, okay. Since you're in Houston, I'm going to try and recruit you. I sign. I already run a Salesforce use group meeting, so this gets better. Um,